Hello, my name is Matthias Rote and this is a screencast about TestNG data binding, showing you what you can do with TestNG data binding. First of all, we need a test uh, class that has a method that needs to be tested. And in this case, it's the JSON path compiler class with the compile method, which takes a string as an input and compiles it to a JSON path object, which it returns. Obviously, you could input any kind of string, but only some strings can be compiled and other strings cannot be compiled to a JSON path. This leads us to the test class for the JSON path compiler which has two test methods, one should compile test method and the should not compile test method. Whereas the uh, should compile test method just takes the JSON path as an input parameter, the should not compile test method takes a JSON path and an error message as input parameters. How does, how do the um, test uh, method parameters actually get into the test methods. Well, they are loaded by the TestNG data binding framework from external CSV files. For that, we need some configuration, which is located in the JSON path compiler TestNG data binding test data properties file co-located to the uh, test class containing the should compile and should not compile test methods. For each test method, we've got a set of configuration parameters. First of all, we've got the data source, which is in both cases CSV. Then we've got the URL leading uh, to the actual CSV file and some other uh, keys key value mappings that define how the uh, CSV file is actually mapped or bound to the uh, input parameters and how the CSV file is structured. <coughs> now what do the CSV files look like? First we have the should compile CSV file which contains just a list of JSON paths that can be compiled. Each line is one instance of an equivalence class standing for a number of different strings that can be compiled and have this similar structure. The should not compile CSV file is similarly structured but also has an error message next to the JSON path. So, why do we actually put it into external files? Well, it's actually easy. Um, data belongs into external files. It can be edited and maintained there very well. And if you want to add another test case, you just have to add another line. Going back to the test class, you might have seen that the test annotations don't actually have any data provider specified. How does it work that we don't specify a data provider but can have data provided by one anyway? Well, <coughs> we use another TestNG feature which is the listener and define the listener as a um, test annotation transformer contained in the uh, TestNG data binding framework. And this just looks at the data binding annotation and if it finds it on the class, on the test class or on the test method, it actually sets the data provider on the test annotation for us. So we don't have to do that on every single test method. This is it for this uh, cast. More is to come later, so stay tuned.